Okay, everybody, welcome to the regular council meeting of Cross Lake, September 12th. Let's stand for the pledge. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. <clears throat> Well, thank you all for coming. Uh, first on the agenda is some additions to the agenda. We've got some additional bills. We got Cindy Mugato from the Chamber of Commerce, permission to host Cross Lake Day's chili cook-off and close part of Pioneer Drive on September 24th. And a memo dated September 12th from Mike Lyonis, closed meeting of August 11th. 2022 results of the MOU approval. And one more thing, appoint two representatives from the city to participate in the project management team for the Cross Lake pedestrian and, and intersection improvement meetings. So do I have a motion um, to approve those? Mayor, I have another addition to the agenda. Okay. I'd like to add um, the uh, job class that we um, added for lead wastewater operator discussion on it. Okay, and we'll do that at Public Works? Probably, huh? That's fine. Yeah. I don't care where you add it as long as you add it. Okay. Could we get a motion to approve? I'll so move. I'll second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carries. All in favor. Uh, public forum, action may or may not be taken on any issue raised if council requires more information or time for consideration. The issues will be placed on the agenda of the next regular council meeting. Speaker must state their name and address. Does anybody have anything? Come on, John. Hi. Uh, my name's Jonathan Grothy. My address is uh, 36130 Butternut Point Road. Um, I'm here as a representative of the Cross Lakers Volunteer Organization and more on it inf informational than anything. Uh, the Minnesota Design Team is an American Institute of Architects Minnesota program comprised of architects, landscape architects, urban designers, planners, and other experts in design and community development. Their goal is to use, or to use design to help small Minnesota communities develop shared vision of a healthy future improving their physical and environmental designs. They assist communities in planning and designing a viable, appropriate future by working not only with design issues, but with also with fundamental planning procedures that allows residents to take an initiative in, in contributing to plan a future that reflects the dreams and interests of the community and translating these values into sustainable design ideas that the community can implement. On September 16th of 2016, the Minnesota design team came to Cross Lake. They left a lasting mark in Cross Lake when volunteers donated their time to listen to the community members and suggest ways to improve the city of Cross Lake. They met with residents, they toured the town, and they drew up designs, among other things developing from this initial meeting were the National Loon Center and the Cross Lakers organization. This coming Friday, September 16th, is the sixth anniversary of that initial meeting. At 5.30 in the Corps of Engineers Park at the picnic shelter, there will be a celebration and public gathering to review the accomplishments, present proposed projects, and get ideas for future projects from residents. You will also hear updates from the County Road 3 and 66 intersection and sidewalk improvements coming in 2024. This is a mini version of the original meeting six, six years ago. It'll be pre presented by members of the Cross Lakers with members of the original Minnesota design team, county and consulting engineers attending also. It'll be sponsored by the, the Cross Lakers at no cost to the city or attendees. We will have kettle popcorn, beer and soft drinks will be provided again at no cost. So the Cross Lakers haven't had an, uh, the opportunity to have a public informal meeting like this 
for a few years now, so we're hoping to get a large group of people and a diverse group to come to this meeting. So it's open to all residents and interested parties, council and mayor also. So again, it's Friday, September 16th, this coming Friday at 5.30 p.m. in the Corps of Engineers Park at the picnic shelter. So if you have any questions, thanks. Jonathan, not that I want to rain on your parade, but they're calling for <laughs> rain on Friday. Do you have any backup? <laughs> Uh, I, I'll leave that up to Cindy. She probably has a better idea than me, but I, I'm sure we can do something indoors. We'll be under the shelter. We'll be under the shelter? Okay. So it's there, rain or shine. Yeah. So at, you're at the core. Right. <laughs> All right. Okay. Anybody Thank else? you. All right. Anybody who's got any questions or concerns about the intersection improvement should be there. This is one of the opportunities we've been talking about for months, so. Don't wait till it's all decided. Anybody else? Okay, not seeing anybody, we'll close public forum. Next is the consent calendar. Did everybody have a chance to go through it? Yes. Any questions or anything? Motion? I wanna pull um, number six, the balance sheet. For discussion? Yes. Okay. Anything else? And we'll discuss that at the administrator's report. Marsha? Pardon? You're in the administrator report? No, that's fine. Yeah. Okay, a motion to approve? So move. Second. Motion is second, all in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed, motion carries. Okay, next, the mayor and council report. We have a resolution accepting donations. I'm not going to read the whole thing. We got three donations. Cross Lake Firefighters Relief donates $56,342.55 towards a 2022 GMC truck. Next is the Pell Foundation, a $24,795 donation toward the playground installation. And next, the Pell Foundation, $936 for pickleball picnic tables. Do we have a motion to approve? So move. Second? Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 And thank you. You're welcome. <laughs> You're doing the work. <laughs> uh, let me see here. Next, we got a thank you letter to Jake Meyer. Is Jake in here tonight? No? Uh, you want to read that thing, Eric? Sure. If you want to? Well, this is from Josh and uh, Tamara. 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 Redding. Uh, chiefly, we want to take the time to personally recognize Officer Meyer for his handling of a frustrating situation last week. The city put him in a difficult position with the road closure. As part of my job, I am responsible for working with police departments in 33 states to support our security efforts. Officer Meyer did something I have rarely seen by a police officer. He took the time out of his busy day, came to our cabin and connect on a previous in interaction that was difficult and really seek to understand our perspective while helping us understand his difficult situation. This is outstanding professionalism, which we rarely see today in our corporate positions. It's clear Cross Lake officers are really here to protect and serve and be partner with the residents and guests of the Cross Lake community. My guess is leadership drives this behavior. We are a family that supports the hard work and service of our police officers. It's not much, but a small token of our appreciation for Officer Meyer. Thanks for serving our community, Josh and Tamara. Thank you, Eric. And thanks to uh, Jake. Was there anything with that or is that it? It said a small token. Was there some kind of donation or something? There was a... Uh, a card for a local restaurant that goes into a kitty. We don't accept okay. that personally. 
Okay, good for you guys. Okay, next, uh, the Good Goodrich O'Brien Lake Association has initiated an effort to look into the possibility of having a paved walking path constructed along Bonnie Lakes Road. Do you guys want me to read this whole thing? You guys, is there a Bonnie Lakes rep here? Do you want to read it? Oh, come on up, you guys. Thank you, Mayor and Council, for allowing us to be here. Um, my name is Jane Hulbrick, and I live at 37233 Bonnie Lakes Road. Um, I'm here with my fellow neighbors um, representing Goodrich and O'Brien Lake Association and our membership and residents of Bonnie Lakes Road. The Goodrich and, uh, Goodrich and O'Brien Lake Association, it's called GOLA for short, G-O-L-A, uh, has initiated an effort to pursue the possibility of having a paved walking path constructed alongside Bonnie Lakes Road, ensuring public safety for all users. Some background. Great things have been happening in our Lake Goodrich and Bonnie Lakes neighbor, O'Brien neighborhood. A large number of new families moved here during the last five years. Um, also during the pandemic and now with the addition of high-speed internet, thank you Tremolo, formerly Cross Lake Communications, um, it gave seasonal owners the ability to move here permanently and work from home. Um, there's also been a lot of new construction and major remodeling with the rollover of many houses in the last two years and the market. Um, short more people are committed to year-round living out there now. That's the good news. Individuals and families are getting outside. They're walking. They're running. Grandmas, moms, dads are pushing baby strollers. They're walking dogs on leashes, sometimes two at a time. Um, and it's all for exercises and health, and that is fantastic. Um, but a challenge has come with that. Um, and those activities are really becoming endangered by that challenge. Our lovely Bonnie Lakes Road is narrow. It has zero shoulders. It is very curvy on many sections without sight lines in several places. Uh, due to increased industrial traffic, more cars, more pickups, using that road there have been near misses and hazardous vehicle person interactions, very, very close vehicle human close calls. Add to this, um, thank you for helping our neighborhood. Uh, you as a city council have approved 38 acres for development just off Highway 36. That'll bring at least a dozen new homes and families to live and exercise on our road. We do understand that Bonnie Lakes Road is within the city of Cross Lake and Fairfield Township. Altogether, there are 3.25 miles of road on this active neighborhood road. We have requested also that Fairfield Township Board put us on their agenda, um, and the soonest we could get on was October 11th to begin a conversation with them also. We understand it's going to take a collaborative effort between several entities to plan, to fund, to execute, and to construct a paved path along Bonnie Lakes. We have no doubt it will increase safety and possibly um, an actual event or potentially deadly situation out there right now. And. Um, we are looking to hear, have you hear that. Uh, my friends here also make add to that a uh, couple of pieces of information or answer any questions you have. So you said 3.2 miles. 3.25. Is that Fairfield and Cross Lake? Yes. How much of it is Cross Lake? Do you know? One, one mile. One mile is Cross Lake, the rest is Fairfield. And Bonnie Lakes Road is, all due respect, kind of a tingle town back there you know, when you get back into all the other roads off of it. So which, what are you thinking about doing? As much as you can or just the main road? Just 
right now we're thinking from 36 back to where the Scout Camp Cuyuna Aquatic Management Area is. Um, that's a site that's open to the public for recreational use under the DNR AQM access program. And that would primarily be Cross Lakes probably, huh? No, that, that's, the mileage I gave you was from 36 back to the Scout Camp Cuyuna started their trail. So of that, one mile is Cross Lake and 2.25 is Fairfield Township. Okay, uh, any comments? Have, have you worked at all with our, our Parks and Rec people? Not yet. We were um, at a meeting last Tuesday um, with the... Planning and Zoning? Plan Planning and Zoning? Yeah. Yes. And they referred us here. They referred us to... <coughs> they were at the Public Works meeting. Uh oh, okay. I was going to okay. say, I don't remember them at Planning. Thank you. Okay. Okay. <laughs> uh, aren't trails under UTJ? It's a collaborative effort with Public Works and Parks. Um, I believe in the past, the building of it, the construction of it was under Public Works, and the maintenance of it was Parks. Okay, but how about requesting it and getting it started like they're asking for? I have not been involved in that process, so I... I think we need to know if Fairfield is, Township is on board. Um, I don't think anyone hey, here Bill, is opposed. Can I tell them you're, they're on board? You're on board if they are? <laughs> no, not for me. <laughs> no, I think the city supports walking yeah. trails. You know, I think we would support that. It's just a budgeting thing and uh, figuring out how to do it. I think we have to develop, you know, who's going to be involved, uh, the township, you know, and the city and how we can find funding. Uh, we'll probably ask for a 10-year waiver on snow plowing in the winter. But this road goes to a DNR well, site? Potentially it could. There's a uh, aquatic management area designated um, back by Scout Camp Cuyuna. So in looking at some of the grants, one of the grants that seemed appropriate is there's what they call a connection grant. Right. And this would be connecting the community to a recreational area. Yeah, that's where I was going with it, that, that it's going to um, connect up with DNR. But there's grants out there. And, and that, excuse me, Mark Erickson, I live at 36775 Viney Lakes Lane. Uh, so I, I don't need anything done there, but we walk all the time up to Viney Lakes Road, and it is dangerous. Uh, but those grants need a sponsor, and it needs to be a government right. agency. So right. There's not, we're kind of, we can throw the ideas out there. Uh, but we need somebody, and I yeah. don't think Fairfield Township has ability. So we're really asking somebody from Cross Lake to step up and look at I've been on, for us. I've been on Bonnie Lakes a lot, and it is a hazard. I mean, I, I've seen the people walking. But Jake, lives, Jake lives there. He lives on Bonnie Lakes Road. Mm. Uh, it's, Jake Meyer? Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's, I was worked for the Olmstead County Sheriff's Office for 31 years. And uh, work traffic for 15 before I went inside. It's it's dangerous. Uh, I mean. Yeah. No, I agree. A lot of people they use it, they walk it. It sounds like a good thing. There's some homework to do. Uh, Fair. We, we need to be pointed in the right direction uh, because none of us had done uh, this kind of thing before. So um, you know, we're open and willing to. Um, Mike, do you want to jump in? Is there any direction that you can offer? Well, typically when we've done a new trail, we've done it when we've reconstructed the road. Um, we've got, you said a mile of it's in Cross Lake, two, a little over two and a quarter of it's in Fair, Fairfield. You know, we'd, we'd have to have some type of cooperative reimbursement agreement with the township. Um, because we wouldn't want to do the whole thing and carry the ball for the whole no. project. Right. Um, you know, you'd want to plan it when you do the road because it typically works best when the road is either um, repaved or reconstructed. I think your first step probably is to um, meet with the, uh, make Fairfield. your presentation to Fairfield Township. And then from there, we can figure out 
how we're going to proceed with it. Okay. okay, so we'll do that, and then would you like to see us back here at a council meeting or at some other committee meeting? How, how should we proceed after that? I would suggest council, but I guess. Well, or I, I would, don't you think public works? Let them go through that. Well, it makes no sense to me. Yeah. It's going to end up here no matter what. Yeah, you'll get back here, but there's going to be some steps you got to do. It's, uh, it's not going to be a quick, easy process. We realize I, that. We, I, I think you that. sure know that, don't you? Yeah. When you, get, when you get done with Fairfield, talk to Pat. He's a public works director. Okay. And, um, and then see if there's anything that you guys can get started and going from there. How would that be? Okay. Sounds good. It's a good place to start. Okay. Right. And I guess I'm going to volunteer if you want to let me know when that meeting is with Fairfield. I'd go with you. See what they say, if that might help. October 11th. Okay. And I think it's 4 p.m.? Be if it's something different that I'll send you an email okay. and if you could at that meeting uh, one of the major points that you should probably discuss is ongoing maintenance in the future because that is going to be um, a big thing we look at obviously over half of the trail is not on city land so we obviously have the equipment I don't know what they have but that certainly is a big thing that needs to be discussed some of the grants we were looking at like through the DNR that required a 20 year commitment for maintenance and Care, you know, so it's after 20 years when you have maintenance. <laughs> yeah, that's right. That's first 20, yeah. <laughs> so. okay. Well, Thank good, you good luck to you. Thank you. Thank you. Yep. Okay, Cindy. Good evening, Cindy Mugato with the Cross Lake Chamber of Commerce, and I wanted to let you know that Cross Lake Days begins next weekend. Thursday, September 22nd, so not this weekend, but the following. Um, we kick it off with a three-day treasure hunt for the lost chili pepper. The business community has generously donated more than $3,000 worth of gift cards, apparel, services, and <coughs> items for the prize basket. There will literally be hundreds of people exploring Cross Lake looking for that chili pepper. Also Thursday evening is the spaghetti fundraiser dinner for the Northern Minnesota Railroad Trackers, and that's at Moonlight Bay. Friday evening, you'll find activities taking place in Town Square that include new this year is a pet parade, um, and we're highlighting the Babinski Foundation in that. You may have noticed that we're clearing out the exchange parking lot, uh, and Saturday morning, the 24th, artists and crafters coming from all over the state will show up to sell their wares. And more crafters will be located at the Cross Lake Lutheran's Yule Fest and the Lions Flea Market in Town Square. 31 businesses citywide will be serving up chili at their locations, and people are encouraged to use the Cross Lake app to vote for their favorites. Cross Lake Ace Hardware is the site for the Knights of Columbus' third annual cornhole tournament, followed by the second annual street dance featuring a big band out of the cities named the TC Jammers. You maybe have heard of Bobby Vandell, kind of a big name in the area. The Cross Lake Community Center is hosting their playground grand opening, as well as golf cart, tick, uh, golf cart tours, pickleball demos, outdoor um, obstacle course races on the new playground equipment, um, popcorn and root beer floats. There's a loon calling contest, there's bingo, there's meat raffles, there's bonfires, there's games, and there's a variety of, li of live music featured at businesses throughout Cross Lake. And the historical Log Village is again hosting their annual cider and candlelight tour Saturday evening. Lanyards will get you great deals and discounts at 35 different businesses in Cross Lake Friday and Saturday. So you see it's going to be a very, very, very busy weekend in Cross Lake. Now, so in reviewing all my paperwork for this, I realized that I had not yet secured your permission to host a chili cook-off, which is required by state law, so I do need a motion. Um, to allow the chili cook-off within the city of Cross Lake on Saturday, September 24th from 12 noon to 3 p.m. I move that we okay, do that. Go ahead, go ahead, John. I'll second it. Okay, any other discussion, questions? All in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carries all in favor. Thank you. Um, and is we have in the past two years, I'm also asking that you allow the closure of Pioneer Drive between Reed's Market and Cross Lake Ace Hardware for the Cornhole Tournament and Street Dance, 
Both businesses have um, given permission and are looking forward to these events. Um, I also asked that I could work with Public Works for barricades and cones in this area. We anticipate the road would be closed at approximately 9 a.m. until the street dance ends at 7 p.m. So we wanted to get it done before dark, so it would be 9 a.m. to 8 p.m. would be the time. This closure takes place between Reed's and Ace Hardware. Reed still has their back truck entrance and their front entrance off of Pioneer Drive. The only closure on that section into Reed's would be that middle entrance. And then Ace Hardware also has their, if you want to call it the north and south entrance open, the only closure would be in the middle of their store. So traffic would be able to go around through Reed's parking lot or around on Heritage Drive. And you did this last year, right? We did, two years. For the any, last two years, we've done it. Any, no issues? No huh? issues. Yeah. Eric, any issues? As long as people leave barricades alone, I'm fine. Thank you. We will be there to make sure that happens. There's a way around, Eric. <laughs> okay, we got a motion to approve? So move. Second. All right, all in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carries all in favor. Thank you, Cindy. Thank you. Lastly, I'm nervous that County Road 6 may not yet be passable for Cross Lake Days. And I've just shared with you that all these activities will be taken on both sides of the project in the construction zone. So is there any way that you can assure me that the road will be passable through both phases of construction on Route 66? in 10 days during Cross Lake Days? Well, the Honorable Phil Martin has entered the building, and I'm sure he will be addressing that. Uh -huh. <laughs> That's okay. coming up on the agenda. OK, yeah. I will stay till public forum. Yeah. Um, but if, if not, <laughs> if, that, if, if assurance can't be given, is there any way we could come up with a backup plan to provide the necessary authorization for Casper to allow the traffic through? Thank you. Thank you, Cindy. Okay. City Administrator's report. Okay, since there was an item pulled from the consent calendar, why don't we go ahead and take care of that first? Oh. Well, the, the reason I, I pulled it was because I wanted to um, question not question, but ask, ask a question about, um, you know, we've had discussion about uh, uh, starting a building maintenance plan. And I see on the second page that we have an assigned balance for, for public works buildings. And we also have in the budget 15,500. And if we don't use um, the whole amount of 15,500, like the council to consider, putting that into a building fund and not necessarily a, a public works building, but um, we do have 33,000 in a building maintenance fund. I, I just, I, I wanted to call that um, to the council's attention. And um, so, and I don't know, do we need the 122,000 in bridges? And there's still the. Lost me. Where's 122,000? I'm sorry. Don't hear. Okay. Start with the assigned balances. Um, but we, you know, we were talking about budgeting. I just, I don't, I don't want to approve the balance sheet because then these are, are um, approved balances, and I want to make sure that um, we understand when we approve the balance sheet that we're approving the assigned balances. And I want to make sure that um, we get the correct amount in there. Um, the c correct amounts are in there as well, it was before. Well, I'm just saying that we can change the assigned balances. Right, you can. And I would, I would suggest we defer that conversation to a budget meeting. Well, I just wanted to make sure that everybody understood that that is 33,000 of building maintenance because that was the big discussion. Was that, was that um, we don't have any funding for building maintenance and. And we do, we have, in the budget, we have 15,500 and we haven't utilized all that. 
And we also have on the balance sheet in assigned balances 33,000. That's correct. Okay. And there's still 147 at police. I think um, that's why I pulled it. I think we should hold this until the you know, next month or the budget meeting instead of just approving it and look at those assigned balances if, if um, the council would entertain pull that. Line six out of there? Just pull line six out? Just totally? Yeah. Until the budget meeting? Just not approve it tonight. Yeah. Okay. Probably need a motion to do that. Okay. I'll, I'll make a motion that we uh, uh, table approving the balance sheet for uh, August until after the next budget meeting or at the next budget meeting too if you want to. I, but I want to table it. Okay. You second, Aaron? Yes. Any other discussion on it? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries all in favor. Okay, with that, that leads right into item one under my report, uh, 2023 budget. Now we've had, a, we've had several meetings on the budget. Um, some of you provided questions, which I provided answers to. I got some more questions over the weekend on it, so I'll be able to respond to those. Most of them uh, relate to pro some of them projects that are coming up. Um, so with that said, we talked about our next budget meeting for September 12th, but we didn't set a time. For, I'm sorry, September 19th, but we didn't set a time. So I'd be suggesting uh, 2 p.m. in the afternoon. That's a week from today. 2, 2 p.m. And additional questions, I would appreciate those so I can get them into the next model. I have a question right now. Sure. Um, was the fire truck ordered? Do you know? I see Chip isn't here. Go ahead, Char. He said he was going to order it today, yes. It was the deadline today. The 15th is the deadline. And there, there, I, would, I would like to, um, now things have changed because before uh, the uh, quote for the sales rep had said that we could pay 260,000 in uh, six to nine months. And then after a year, in two to three months, the final payment would be due. That would carry us into 2024. Um, I'm not for putting it under uh, an equipment. Because if we did that on the ladder truck, we paid 83000 more for the ladder truck in interest payments. I would rather see us um, hold off ordering the truck or either having them clarify that they will take that last payment in 2024, January, right away in 2024. And if they don't, if they won't do that, then I don't think we should order it because um, it just adds a lot of costs. I think we should budget until we have the money to pay for it. That's my thought. My thought was the uh, deadline apparently to order it without getting a price increase was today. So no. I think we should. I have the email. It says 2015, or it says uh, September 15th. I just remember what was said at the budget meeting by uh, the police chief, or sorry, the fire chief. That was the car. The police car. That's for the fire chief here, here. If, if you would like to read it, it's, it's uh, September 15th. Um, the motion that was made at that meeting for CHIP was to order the truck. I know, but I think I said at that meeting that I wanted it based on that financing. And then there was a lot of talk, And I talk, think talk. even at the end of the meeting, CHIP said, I will clarify that for you and see if we can do it that way. So it and was before, really not definite. Before the vote was taken, I said, I want to clarify this motion. The vote or the motion was to order the truck, period. Is that correct? And yes. Everyone said yes, and then the vote was taken. But I had already made that comment before you even took the vote. And then Chip, at the end of the, at the, end of the uh, uh, discussion, said that he would clarify whether we could make the final payment in 2024. So um, I kind of feel like it was changed on me. So 
based on the financing, I don't want to do equipment certificates. I want to pay for that truck um, the way he, the salesperson had given us a quote. My understanding is Chiff is going to still find out the question that you have as to what will be But it'll be, too, it'll be too, too late then if, we can't, if they won't accept a payment after 2024 if he orders the truck. That's what I'm trying to get to is that they had said 260 after eight to nine months and after a year you could expect the chassis and then you have two to three months to make that final payment that would take us to January. 2024, and we could budget accordingly and not have a $600,000 equipment certificate that's going to add probably another 80000 to the cost of the truck. Doesn't make any sense. We should just hold off now. If they won't take that, then we should just hold off ordering it and uh, wait till we have enough budgeted uh, a balance for it. You want to add another 80000 to the truck? I don't. So, Shar, all the conversation leading up to the authorization to order the truck is discarded because the motion didn't include it? There was a lot of talk in between. Some people said, we'll figure out how to pay for it after. Just get it ordered. Everyone had their own opinion. Nobody agreed on how to pay for it. But the only thing everyone agreed on was to order the truck. I didn't agree on that, so everyone did not agree that. It was a four to one vote. That. It was a well, four to one vote. If, if we're going to finance it, then I'll change my vote to no. It was, I mean, the opportunity to put it off to 24 budgeting, I think, was a part of that. I restated the motion. That I was, I was you, confused you as well. I restated it and asked for clarification. If it was real clear, then why did put in the motion? Yeah. Why did Chip say he was going to get it clarified? I, I'm just saying that I, I think the motion. Clarification and nobody. Yeah, I think nobody the motion was it. changed. I mean, the from motion. what I understood it, it was changed. So if if we can't finance it the way if he hasn't got it clarified i wish he was here tonight if he hasn't got it clarified i'll change my motion because i am not going to uh, uh, approve financing and adding another eighty thousand dollars to the cost of that truck because we're going to finance it okay. we should be budgeting for it uh mike is chip going to be here on the what is it 19th yes That'll be too late then. No, the, the truck can be canceled. We're not going to have any investment oh. into it at this point. Okay. But, as long as we can cancel it then. But the point that is the motion was, that. the clerk requested the motion to be clarified, and that's why she asked that, and it was. And the motion is what was voted on, not all the previous discussion. And at that time, the motion was to order the truck, and we would follow up with the financing afterwards, and the vote was four to one. And if you want to see that, I think you've got the timestamp on the let's, let's video just for that. for today. Let's bring yeah. it back on the 19th when we're doing budget. Sure. And let's clarify. So you're thinking that we can cancel it if... I, th I believe we can. Okay. All right. I would guess it's a lot like my squad car that I ordered. I can still cancel that. You can still cancel it? Right. Okay. That's, I, All right. I, same thing. Then I'll let okay. it go. I, but I think give him a chance to... Yeah, he hasn't gotten back to us, so I just, I didn't know if he had ordered it or not. Okay. Okay, let's move on to item two then. In front of you is a memo um, from me talking about the results of a closed meeting um, back from August 11th where we talked about resetting um, where the current staff for Teamsters was on the pay scale. So what you have is a... Um, you're moving Officer Willard from step eight to nine, Officer Mark from step four to six, and Officer Haynes from step one to three um, within the current union contract. And what's attached to that is a memo of understanding that was discussed at that meeting. Now Teamsters is ready to agree to that once the council's agreed to it and everything's ready to roll forward. And the effective date everyone at the time agreed to was as of August 14th. 
So what I need from the council is approval of the memorandum of understanding so we can close this chapter out. I move that we accept the memorandum of standing between the City of Cross Lake and Teamsters General Local 346. I'll second it because this is what we had agreed to the other day. Okay, any other discussion on it? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Thank you. All in favor? Yep. And then uh, I believe. Councillor Voles had a question on another labor issue she brought up as an addition at the beginning. Oh, I thought we were doing that on the public works. I do have a question um, on the wastewater lead, um, wastewater lead operator, or is it lead wastewater operator? I guess it doesn't matter. Um, a question on that. Um, that hasn't come back to the city council, but um, my understanding there's been a couple meetings on that. We haven't been informed of or anything. We have had no meetings on it. No, the union. The union. Has, the union may have met several has met several times, and they've requested some additional information and a list of questions that I'm trying to get set up to go through with our, our labor attorney. And once because my have, understanding is that they don't want to lead wastewater operator. Well, there's a whole list the of union. questions. Yeah, but the, the one that, that we have approved is that one. I think that's where we're getting into trouble is we're trying to negotiate that contract again, and it's done. In two years, come back to us, and that's it. So they don't even want that job class. So I think, I think we should rescind that motion and just be done with it. We're, why would we spend... Um, attorney fees, a couple hundred dollars an hour on something they don't want anyway. So I think we should just say no, because we don't want to, we already, we already signed and approved that contract. I don't know why we're opening up again. Well, because we agreed to do it and they did request that it be looked at. Now they've got a list of other questions too that they would like addressed related to that. And th those are in the confidential and privileged state because they're between the union attorneys right now. And those are the things that they need to work out before we, for staff and the labor attorney can get back to the council with the recommendation. And that hasn't occurred yet. But I don't understand if they don't want it, we should be just done. We should just rescind that motion and just Your understanding is incorrect. Okay. Well, they're changing our agreement, though, so when they come back, we can certainly be done with it at that point if it changes. But, but again, there'll be more to come on that once, once those conversations take place. Okay? Let's move on to item three. Um, we all know we have a... Um, the engineers are looking for, and the county is looking for a project management team for the Cross Lake Pedestrian Intersection Improvement Meetings. As part of that process, um, there's a project management team, and they've requested that two representatives of the city to participate in those project meetings. And my recommendation would be myself, because I'm already intimately involved with the funding and the, and the grant applications for it, and I'd recommend myself and the mayor participate in those meetings. You should be the other one, shouldn't he? I'll, I'll make a motion okay. that that we appoint Mike and Dave to be to participate in the project management team. This is the sidewalks and trails and stuff, right? Intersection that improvement. It's I believe. the sidewalks yeah. and trails, and then the intersection improvement. Okay, so there's a motion. Do we have a second on it? No second motion fails. I don't think I can vote on it, right? Well, that was a motion, so I guess. Yeah. yeah. I can? Yeah. Okay, I'll second it then. Um, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Aye. Aye. Okay. Mayor breaks the tie, right? No. no? Okay. So now what do we do? 
<coughs> well, well, I, I believe Tim be, Bray is here. It should be staff. If you have any Mike and questions Mike. on that, yeah. he may be able to well, address Mike those. I'm going to put Tim on the spot. Mike just made the recommendation. Mm -hmm. well, I could, I didn't, didn't you make the recommendation for you and the mayor? Correct. Okay. You didn't hear that. Okay. You are moving that. Why isn't it two staff members? I'm asking that question. Well, we'd like a direct representative from the council on there, too, because it is a, a, a big project. Okay. Then I'll go back and I'll resend my, my uh, no to a yes. Okay. Why would we not have Pat involved, who's in charge of public works? Well, I like Mike involved for the simple reason that he's, uh, he's done all the grants and he's done so much of it. He's got his fingers on about three different pies there of money coming in. So that's, that's why I'm in favor of him. How about having Mike and Pat? Mike and Pat? That's what you're looking at? But Mike is saying there should be council. Yeah. I, so I'm, so if you, are you changing your vote? Help me out, Tim. Well, it said staff, so that's why I'm looking at staff. Okay. Yeah. Right. It really is up to uh, Mr. Mayor and Council. Um, it really is up to you who your representatives want to be. So the other uh, members on the team will be myself, another representative from the county, and maybe Rob Hall, especially when you get into the technical parts of it. The Corps of Engineers representative, Corrine Hodap, will be there. And then also members of the consulting team will be there. These are the team members that will start to review some of the technical data and see some of the uh, initial stuff will be the uh, traffic counts. But as we move forward into some of the more discussion about things, this will be the group that have, I don't know, the real, live data from our consultant and the county's team and helping direct some of the uh, decisions that need to be made moving forward. What are the services you need from the city? I mean, do you need money services? Do you need technical engineering services? Do you need public support service? What is it you need from the city? Well, we also need some communication, but uh, we also will need uh, maybe some financial stuff. I think the grants are all going to be up front and all the money is going to be by the county and we'll eventually have uh, an agreement later with the city to, and possibly some other entities. It's really reviewing uh, where we're going with the project, making sure that the consulting team is uh, maybe updating the city and there's a lot of information requirements that I've put in place we'll make sure that those are going. So it's really making the project go smoothly and helping disseminate some information. So it really doesn't matter. Um, my suggestion was the mayor. He's currently really plugged in to uh, the community. Um, it, it may be not uh, the public works aspect. Maybe Patrick has better working knowledge of the roadway systems and potential intersection <coughs> configurations. It's up to you, but my suggestion was Mayor Nevin. No offense, Pat. Talk it up, guys. <laughs> you got to come to a decision. Bill, you have anything to add? Did I miss anything on the? You nailed it. Okay. Well, so you got, can I just add so, one more thing? So now you got. You got the city administrator and the county engineer saying that it should be the mayor and and Mike. So I don't know what you want to do, but but John and Aaron are saying there shouldn't be. So we got to decide. Can I just? Um, that doesn't mean that everybody, you know, certainly input from Chief Lee is going to be very important. That doesn't mean that they don't get to provide input. You can't even come. To, you can't complain. <laughs> no. Um, <laughs> It doesn't mean they're not getting input from all those, but we can't uh, manage, effectively manage this project with a project management team of 50 people. The community is still going to be engaged. The experts are going to still be engaged uh, in this process. I also felt well, you need to have two people that are going to be able to make the meetings. Um, Currently, it's monthly meetings. We also, I 
required that they provide, the consultant provide also ways to um, tell it, come in by Zoom or whatever too. So we've provided lots of options. All right, I'll, I'll go and support the mayor and the administrator. So I'll make a motion that we have administrator and the mayor. Second. Okay, all in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Wasn't that the motion I made? Okay, is that it? That's it for me. TJ? I'll be as painless as possible here. Um, item number one, we have an agenda item, copying services. I don't know if you guys are aware, but uh, we don't really have a business that we're aware of in town that right now does copying services. We've had an influx of people wanting last minute copies of um, information that they need that day. And, and in our policy right now, we don't accommodate that. And uh, we talked about this at the park commission level and we understand that the business that once had copying service, they don't, they plan to reopen again someday. So we do recognize that we don't wanna take away um, that business away from, from that uh, business. So what our thought is, is to reestablish uh, copying services up until the point when a business provides that service again in the city. TJ, what were you at before when we did it? Was it 10 cents or 11 cents a page? Char, wanna, do you remember? I want to say it was still 25 cents. 25 oh. cents for the first page, 10 for each additional. Okay. Yeah. But we've changed it since then. And right. Now it's and, 25 and cents. Some of your burden was somebody coming in with 100 pages, too. Right. And it right. was confusion for our volunteers, and we just wanted to make it at a flat 25 cents. So I support it. It's really hard to say no when they're really needing right. a copy and they need to run down to But you don't want to encourage content. them to come in and right. use you that way, but. If you're gonna have the people that gotta have it five minutes ago. Yeah, and we recognize that and we talked to the volunteers and they weren't necessarily happy about it, but they did recognize that even they were facing it. You know, it's really hard to tell someone, no, you have to go to Pequot or down to Brainerd to make a copy when they need it now, so. That's about the community center. I mean, we, we gotta okay. somehow do things for the community and, and be open and willing to do things for them. If it creates problem, come back and talk to us. Mm -hmm. I'll make a motion we approve that. I second it. Any other discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed, motion carries. Item two, we have what we discussed at the last council meeting. Um, I did forget to send the proposal to Shar, but I did show you this on the overhead at the last council meeting to replace the two units this year and the two, new, two units next year. So that's what I'm here proposing tonight is to replace the two units. One serves the, um, the changing rooms and the bathrooms off of the gym, and then the other furnace is the one of three for the gymnasium. So I'm asking for approval for $24,400 to replace those two units yet this year. And we have 26,000 in the budget. I move that we replace those two HVAC units. I'll second it. Okay, TJ, so it's $50,000 to do two units? Yep, 48. Seems crazy expensive to me. But. It's gone up quite a bit. Okay, motion to second, any other discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed, motion carries. That's all I have unless you have anything for me. I have a question. Mm -hmm. So if they go over 25, I'd like to see two quotes. Two what? Two quotes. Okay. I mean, that's just for next year. good business. Yes, mm -hmm. yes, yep. for next year. Yep. But Thielen has put the other ones in. Correct. Other, Might not hurt to keep the other two in. Know. Two, are there six total in the building? Yes. Six total, okay. Mm -hmm. I'll do that for next year. I'll just do it, yep. Thanks, Thank TJ. You. TJ, is the obstacle course timer working? So Jerry just asked if the obstacle course timer is working. We just got the batteries for the solar panel and I talked to the um, electrician, he will be there 
later this week to take a peek at that. We're going to make a bracket for the solar panel, and it should be in by next week. Thanks, TJ. Patrick? All right, first thing we need a motion on is I, I'd like, uh, we have a lot of citizens complain that the leaf dump is not open during the week. So I propose that we have it open during business hours during the week. Then on Saturday, we'll open it with one employee that'll open it when he does his checks at the plant. And then they'll close it on Sunday morning when they do checks on the plant again. Then we'll be saving uh, six hours of pay each week because right now we pay employee to open the gate and employee to close the gate on Saturday. And so we'll be saving some money and everyone should be happy and we'll give it a trial basis and if nobody abuses it, we'll just keep it open like that. That sounds good, Patrick. Yeah. I think we need a motion on it, don't we? Yep, probably, yeah. Somebody want to make one? I'll make a motion. We open up the leaf recycling. Second. Per Patrick's, I mean, do you want me to describe that a little more, Shar, or is it good? I've got it. Okay. All in favor? Aye. 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 Can, can you clarify the business hours? Maybe your uh, business hours are different than others. 6.30 to 3 right now. 6.30 to 3? Yep. Thank you. And then the sick new sickle mower has been ordered. I do not have a shipping date on that yet. That has been ordered. Um, we need a, we've uh, talked about that new one ton truck we're gonna replace, but I need you guys to go over it again because it came in a lot higher than what we originally discussed. The truck alone is $56,081. The stainless steel box we're putting on is 21327 there's a special hitch we got to put on the back. That's fourteen thousand sixty-nine dollars. The new uh, stainless steel sander is sixty-five hundred dollars, and the stainless plow is going to be twelve thousand three hundred thirty-six dollars and fifty-seven cents. So the total is ninety-seven thousand seven hundred twelve dollars and fifty-seven cents. And that's a one-ton truck or two? No, ton? it's a fifty-five hundred. So it's two-ton. Yeah, flatbed box on it. It'll be a, like a dump box. Dump box? Yep. It's a dump, not a flatbed. Right, it's a dump box. Now we have 80,000 80, 80, budget budget this year, for it. And you won't receive it till 23, am I correct? No. Yeah, it, it hopefully, it, it's going to be around the first of the year or a little after. It's going to be right in there. They can't guarantee a date until we get it ordered. Don't we have miscellaneous in the budget for Public Works, the equipment? Not that I'm aware of. Um, we had 25,000 in there. We've only used eight, so I would think that we could make it. But you're gonna be using that. Don't no. be planning on using something else in there. <laughs> Your miscellaneous is gone. <laughs> so Pat, how many plow trucks do you have then? You got two dumps? Two, we got the two big dump trucks. One, and then we have, Right now you have the one ton of a plow on it and then the other two pickups have plows on them. So what are you gonna get rid of when you get this one? That one ton. That with one ton has got on some it. issues with it and right now it's gotta go in because there's a radiator leak on it. Okay. And that'll go, if we, when we sell that, then we'll put that money back towards this truck too. I'm not sure what it's valued at right now, but that would go back towards this truck. So we'll declare that one as surplus. Mm -hmm. Okay, well, we got to plow snow. Somebody want to make a motion on that? I'll make a motion we approve. I'll second that. Any other discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? One question I've got is if this does not roll in until next year that we move those funds forward and and maybe roll it, roll it forward in full with the whole 97,000, okay? Yep. All right, then there's some new controls that got put in the lift station as part of the upgrade down there. Those got put in this week. Um, the pillars showed up for the wash bay today, and they're gonna start installing them tomorrow. Um, and we were talking at the uh, public works meeting but there was some uh, money for uh, cleaning the air ducts and different things. 
Um, talking to the county, they, they, they said just leave the money there. Uh, when we're done with all our, our uh, contract stuff, then we'll have it figured out on that, is what they were saying. That makes sense to you. You mean the lease agreement with the joint? Yeah, our lease agreement. The facility? Yeah, because we got to go through all the maintenance stuff and everything with them and get it all figured out. So we can, that 5000 we can assign balance to that. That's, that's I'm sure, what it's for. Yeah, yeah. Are you getting closer on the lease agreement? We've just made a couple brief little talks. We got to get a, they're supposed to get together and have a serious meeting here coming up about it. I don't, there's no date set for it yet. Okay. Then we got the roof prices for down the treatment plant for the two roofs. One was $9,800 and the other one was $22,500. So a total of $32,300 to replace both roofs. And obviously, if there's any rotted wood underneath, there will be an extra charge on top of it to replace. Which roofs were those, Pat? The one is on the, uh, uh, where the influent comes in the plant. That roof, that one isn't, you know, it's just getting old. It isn't leaking yet. It's the other one down where the clarifiers are in that, that they're work that we're doing all the work in. That building, that roof's got bubbles in it from leaking or too much moisture in the attic or something. Is that a pitched roof or a flat roof? No, they're all pitched roofs. Is it metal or shingles? Shingles. Are you going to put metal on them? Yes, yes. I'm a firm believer, do it right metal and we'll be done with them? it. What's that? Metal on both the roofs? Yep. Okay. And that was going to come out of that 60000 that was budgeted to do that back room. If you guys remember that originally. Yeah. It's 60000 so you're not doing the floor then? Because it was uh, budgeted... 60000 for the floor. That was for that the was... floor, and it was for the walls and the insulating and the ceiling and a whole bunch of stuff going on there. I was hoping we'd have enough money left to at least put the concrete in there yet this year. And the roofs are thirty grand, roughly. 32 or something. 32 said. three, yeah. So you got 28 or something. Yeah. 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 Okay, I make a motion we do the roofs. I second it. Any other discussion on it? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. And then out at Dream Island, we started working on the guardrails, the cables out there today, getting them all pulled up and straightened up and leveled. And that'll be a couple more days to get all that done out there. Did you get the shouldering done yet? Uh, there, there's some stuff out there that needs to be done that's coming. <laughs> um, and then I got a question for the council is what are your view, views for replacements of trucks? Like the one I'm driving right now will have 100,000 on it um, within the month. And it's a 2015 model. So I don't know what your guys' views on when you should replace them, how you should replace them, or? What's the newest one you have? 2018, is that the newest date? No. Yeah. You got the dirty end of that stick. Well, I did. <laughs> I, I, I think you should give it to the low man. <laughs> <laughs> so what are, you, what are you talking about, 2023, a truck? Uh, it's, I don't know. It's up to you guys. If you, you know, if you want, yeah, we can look at it and see. I mean, who knows if we can even get another one, find a one ton. You know, it's hard to find them. That's why we bumped up on that one truck was because oh. you couldn't find any one tons. I'll, I'll tell you, 120,000 miles on those trucks. With the amount of idle time on those motors, you're pushing 200,000 miles on the motor. Yep. Uh, I think 120,000 is time to turn them. All right. That's, that's a personal opinion. Well, I think he should check on, for the next budget meeting, I can check, check on the price, prices and yeah. see what All right. you can okay. get. I agree with that. Okay. All right. And then the next thing on my list is the, uh, you guys, before I started, had a discussion about moving that garage that's down there for the parks. Yep. And I got, I, I'm actually building a shed for myself, so I had this contractor give you guys a price. And you had 50,000 budgeted to move the garage and I'm assuming a new roof, siding, windows, doors, the whole shebang. This gentleman will do the concrete, put the insulation in. We'd, as employees, we'd have to put the worst bowl in ourselves to save some money. But he can build the shed for $52,950. Now, what shed are you talking? 
The one that we were going to move to park? Right. So instead Just of build a brand it, new one new for one? roughly $3,000 more. You can have a brand new one. Granted, we have to insulate it, but I'm thinking you're going to have to visit that when you move that older garage up there. You're going to have to do some insulating in that on it. So what are you saying? Leave the shed down there or tear it down and just build Do something one. different than you have a brand new one for 52000 I got, here's a copy of the... Don't we have the slab down? No. No? Oh, <laughs> I thought you were doing right. that. You don't have anything there. Oh, sure. Copy of the bids. It shows what the... It would be 12-foot side walls, uh, two 10 by 10 doors. It comes with the openers on the doors. Like I say, it's three thousand dollars more, and you're starting with brand new. Well, that makes perfect sense to do insulated doors and everything. I the mean, insulated doors, things. we just we'd have to, um, like I said, if we want to save money, uh, the parks and my boys can help insulate it. We can do that ourselves, so we're doing it for the cost of the insulation then to insulate it. Practically makes sense because that'll last a ton longer. That's what I thought, and then. It seems like if you start with something old, it's never quite right when you get done. Yeah. And this so, gentleman, is he built the Napa building on the south end of town. He's done several buildings in the area. How much did you say it was? Uh, you got to look at the, it's $52,950. You can't look to the right because he threw the Where's Bow heat and the boiler in it. Oh, okay. You take that, back that out. Okay. I'm sorry, John. Well, I mean, if that's what it is, it makes sense for me to do it. What kind of siding on it? That'd be all steel. Yeah, well, don't we you think? Choose you colors you want for it. Can you get it done by Cross Lake Days? <laughs> <laughs> the only thing the gentleman will guarantee is the concrete will be done way before it freezes, and then he'll work on the rest. That what are you going to do with the other building? Just leave it there? And leave it there for now unless we can figure out something, you know. I mean, it's still viable for storage right there. Yeah. Just so I, I understand that the, is the uh, maintenance garage expansion, is that what we're talking about? We're talking. Yeah. He just shook his head, yeah. Well, it's not a garage expansion. It's a new garage. But it's well, yeah, up, but I mean. Stuff. Expansion of our storage Budgeted. space. So yes. they're going to that, move that building down, put a new I, roof on. I understand what we're doing. I'm trying to figure out. In the budget, it says seventy-five thousand. Yeah, and that was to build a brand new building. Oh, that and was then, to build a brand new building. Okay. And then we had the idea to move the building, and now we have updated pricing that is shown right now. And that's coming out of park dedication fees. That's yeah. so, council made a motion to do that. Yep. Yeah. Leaving that other building is that going to interfere at all with the proposed kayak? Entry area. It actually won't. No. Okay. Thanks. Okay. I make a motion. We approve that. Sounds good. What? What is a quote from who? Fifty-one thousand dollars or something. I think we got fifty-two better. nine fifty. Just over here. Not forget that. Well, TJ, you got to look at that tubing, though. Do you want to at least put that in and not put the boiler in on this budget? If he's going to park no, the concrete. No, that'll be under 1000 bucks for the tubing. We buy it ourselves and put but it then in. Then you got to put insulation on it. The okay. insulation's already in there. He's already oh. doing all the insulation so underneath the concrete. So you should put the tubing in when he pours it. So what does that come to with the tubing? Tubing would be another 1000 bucks for a round figure. So what is it again, 53, Pat? 53950 50. 52,950. Yeah. Plus 1,000? Plus 1,000 for the in-floor in heat. Okay, I'm sorry. I think so I've made a motion to approve that, right? You is the in-floor heating 11,000? No, because we'll be doing it ourselves. Oh, okay. So. Okay, there's an motion on the floor to approve with second by Aaron. Any other discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. All in favor? That's with uh, Craig, Craig Kapsner Construction? Yeah. yeah. He's out of rice. No. Before, before we leave there, you can keep that I had told I Cindy on, Highway 66 was coming up shortly, and I don't see it coming up on the, the agenda. Could we get Phil to come up and discuss that while we're still under public works? He has a lot to talk about. Yeah, we have to add to his agenda items. 
He's still talking. Well, you're not done. He's still talking. Right, <laughs> oh, I got one more thing and then I'm nice, done. I'm like, nice guy. <laughs> no, it's, um, the last thing is just something to think about for the council. Because we were talking about um, a new uh, attachment for the skid loader. It would be one of them uh, sweep. It's called a clean sweep broom. Because we use it a few times a year, from what I understand, to clean up the sidewalks and that. And this one actually scoops it up and puts it in a little dump box for you. And then you can dump it in the truck. It's just something food for thought. I'm going to go over Breezy Point has one sometime and see how theirs works. How much, how much does the food for You're thought looking at cost? A, so, uh, the sweep deal itself is 6760, and if you put a water system on it, it'll go up to 8436. So we no longer—that's a street sweeper, then? No. Yeah, it's kind of like it'd be like that. It only goes on the skid loader; it picks it all up and everything. But you're still going to want a street sweeper too. Is that it? Um, Besides. No, because the Another one that year? we got is good. There's nothing. It wrong is. With oh, it. hey. Yeah, okay. let's talk about that next year. All right. But are you talking about the September 19th budget for 23? No. Are you talking I just, about I see that Bobcat with those tracks going down the sidewalks, grinding them off too. I don't know if that's the best machine to do it with. Um, it just, yeah, you're right. It, it puts more wear on the on yeah. the skid mm -hmm. loader, so. Let's talk about that at a later time. Okay. That's all I got. We still have item 2A, 2B, and 2. A and B here. Pay application from Rice Lake Construction. <laughs> the pay would be for that. That's just part of the uh, the uh, the stuff that's sitting there at the plant right now. The yeah, the clarifier stuff. I'll make a motion. I'll make a motion that we approve the uh, payment number one two. The clarifiers to Rice Lake construction in the amount of three fifty six two twenty eight sixty two. No, wait. I'm sorry. Could you I'm add wrong. one and two? I'm wrong. Ninety one. <laughs> I went with the balance due. Ninety one thousand three seventy one thirty eight amount due this application pay. And there's two of Marsha, are you wanting to separate payment one and two? I guess I don't care. I get uh, uh, payment two. They're both together there on the okay. item payment two. Okay, two, $33,496.05. This again is for the, the clarifiers. I didn't realize they had two. I'll points. second it. Okay, any other discussion on that? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Carries. Then we got the letter dated September 9th for, uh, from Phil Martin to pay application number four for the county state a, the CHAS 66 sanitary sewer extension. Well, we got to get Phil up here on the horn for that. We can't let him off that easy. <laughs> Mr. Mayor, I'm overjoyed to stand here and tell you about the project. All right, I'm, a, I'm very anxious to hear about so, it. So contractor pay application number four, this is for work through August 26. Um, as it states in here, the value of the work completed is about a million five. We retain 5% by contracts. We're sitting on $77,000, round figures. The city has paid in the past 950,000, so therefore the net amount for this payment is $525,087.31. So that's again work through August 30, August 26. We recommend payment of that amount. We're looking for her council approval. I'll move we pay uh, five hundred twenty-five thousand eighty-seven dollars and thirty-one cents, and this is for uh, sanitary sewers. I'm extension, correct? Correct. Okay. okay, I'll second that. But Phil, it's a $2 million contract, right? Correct. I mean, I don't certainly want to get ahead of paying these guys, so. Understood, we have about, um, we have some curb addition in there. I think we'll be at about $2.2 million project and all said and done. So we're 
sitting um, with about 700,000 yet to pay. So we will have an opportunity to uh, make sure we get everything we need taken care of. The additional curb is not, not gonna be under the city's it, contract, it are we paying it? in this project, it is part of this project, but the county has uh, in, in, indicated they will make that a prompt payment, not wait for 2024. But it is under our contract, it will oh, okay. inflate our project cost. Okay. Okay, let's go. Okay, so there's a motion and a second on the floor. Any other comments on it? All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Thank you. Construction update. So paving was of the trail was completed on Saturday. They intended to do it last Thursday. Uh, they weren't ready, uh, and then rain um, delayed paving till Saturday. The contractor schedule is to do final paving on Wednesday of this week. Um, and then the requirements that the county has is that it can't have final pavement marking until seven days later. So final pavement marking would be on the 22nd of September. We are uh, going to be talking with the contractor tomorrow and encouraging them to do a temp skip stripe after paving on Wednesday and uh, encouraging them or recommending to them that they open the road and complete the rest of the work under traffic with the idea that the city would quit counting liquidated damage days as a result. That we would do what? Quit counting liquidated damage days once they did temp strike and opened it up to operation. If they don't want to do that, then um, they would be choosing to leave it closed and we would be back to the question of, does the county want to take on the liability and open it up? And they don't, I already know that answer. So you're talking about this Thursday opening up the road with I'm temp stripe. I'm talking about if they Next. feel comfortable opening it with a temp stripe, that they could stripe it on Wednesday after they pave. This Wednesday though, the 14th. Correct. The decision rests with them. We're gonna encourage that or see if that's a possibility with the idea that then we're not continuing to count. Have you been on damage. site today? Just briefly. Are you, do you feel comfortable at all that they'll get that dirt work be on the sidewalks and stuff done by Wednesday? They're not intending to get all of it done. They're gonna do that over the next five to seven days. So they're gonna work on the new blacktop. Right, top. so they would have to come up with um, they would have to get comfortable with doing the remaining pull behind work, concrete and bituminous driveway work while the road was open for traffic, if they were going to allow that. You nervous about that? Very. Yeah. Not about that it can't be done, but that we're gonna be back uh, faced with the question of why won't it be opened? So I've seen a dozen schedules that haven't been met. So I'm hopeful on Wednesday it's paid. So the biggest thing is to get the pavement done. Then get we'll the pavement done. Forecast uh, Thursday, at least on my weather app, is rain for the next three days after that. So I'm hopeful they get it paved Wednesday. And then we'll deal with the road conditions after they're done with the rest of their work, huh? But they're not going to open gonna, it unless it's striped. It, we're going to encourage them. We're going to talk tomorrow at the weekly construction meeting with them and again make it known. It should be pretty clear to them that the city's anxious to get traffic flowing through that area. Let me just ask a clarifica clarification question. You are asking, I think, aren't you? And I haven't heard that response that you're saying if, if they allow striping, temp striping, that's substantial completion and we, we're not going to liquidate damages after that day. Correct. That is a question you want answered by the council, right? Correct. Okay, I, that's, I just make that more clear. I want, you, need a, you need a motion on that. Our substantial completion for the project is open to normal operations, which comes with pavement marking. So you're saying this Friday? We're saying that if they went to a temporary stripe instead of a final pavement mark, which they'd still have to do seven days after final paving, that opens it up to traffic operations. 
and our recommendation to the city is then we would be at a point of substantial completion. And when we're talking about what the final liquidated damage or final substantial completion date is, we would put tie it to that temp striping. So then we would give them a one week window or, or whatever till the or seventh whatever days. to finish. Well, yeah. but that's a pretty scary thing, Phil. It, it is the risk you're taking. Santa Claus could be open. dodging bobcats out there if we. I think we should give them till the permanent striping can be done. That's a week, seven days, without damages. Well, the, his question, or I think, but this is to clarify again, you got to weigh, compare, and contrast getting the that road open before Cross Lake days, knowing that it's. The damage is stopped, and there's still work to be done, and it's not the way to do a project properly. But the other, the other option is it won't be open for the weekend. And both options are not great, but I mean, isn't that, the, am I saying that correctly? So, so? I mean, I, I just think that, that the, there has been a, you've heard it, you've brought it to the city's attention. We had a special meeting a week ago Friday. Can we get the road open? Can we get traffic going? And it dropped into the standpoint of, contractor was unwilling to because of their liability of the county and the city were unwilling to take it on on Wednesday it will be paved yeah and it again will be the contractor's decision do they want to do a temp stripe on it if the city were willing to allow that to open up the operation of that road they would still be putting on um, black dirt behind the curb they would still be paving uh, driveways that were black top still some work going on but if they can come up and be comfortable with that type of an operation my question is as a carrot can you say we can stop the clock when you temp strike i don't disagree with that i would just like to the put other some option kind is of limit on it to just hold firm do they open it when they get the pavement marking done in which case our clock goes until that point which is next thursday the 22nd i believe based on their schedule if but they then their we're schedule then we got possible rain delays and who knows are we paying additional for the temporary marking or are they doing that we haven't uh, discussed it with them but our opinion would be it's their cost to get the road open and stop the liquidated damage if that was the choice we wanted to go have they agreed to open it on temporary striping? no we have to talk to them it's tomorrow oh, morning okay Brad? i think phil phil needs to know if he needs it, council backing on that. He's recommending, I think, if the contractor says yes, they might not. But well, if they say yes, uh, is the council okay saying that's substantial completion? Because you can't have it both ways. I mean, either it's substantial completion and the, and the clock stops or it's not. My only hesitation is that we should have some kind of a time window on it. We, I mean, what if they pull off and they come back next spring? Yeah. And they dig it up. That's well, what I would. Still got the well, money hold back. The damages yeah. clause stops, but he, we still haven't paid the final seven hundred grand. Those are two different things. Good questions. I'm not. I'm not. By the way, promoting one or the other, but no, I. I want a council decision. That's know, not a. And again, I, yeah. I would say the same thing. I'm trying to think outside of the box and address the pressure to get it open if it can be opened in a manner which the contractor will retain liability, the city. And the residents would get access. Okay, but I'll, if that's not possible, I mean, then it might not be possible. I don't can know. we sure. can we start up the penalty clause in order to ensure the fact that they will get the project done in a timely fashion after the twenty second or the twenty fourth, which is it that they're supposed to be done? I mean, we can if they're have not that discussion, because I think that their comment will be, well, if you open it to traffic. If we open it to traffic, it will take things that we thought we could get done in this oh, yeah. amount of time. It'll That's what they say. So could you say, well, instead of the 22nd, you'll be completely done. I mean, keep in mind, it would be flowing traffic the whole time under the scenario we're throwing out. Would you allow them an additional week to make sure they wrap up everything else, which is mostly restoration, driveway concrete, and driveway pavement? I will support that. Char, do you understand that if we take that as a motion? So I'll make a motion to support blacktopping Wednesday and opening the road and 
temporary striping and so, removing the penalty. So let me let let me throw an idea and, and then maybe maybe this. I think the, the idea would be that the council supports working with the contractor to see if the road can be opened with them retaining their liability um, using a, and meeting a temporary meeting a substantial completion with a temporary stripe um, after final paving is completed I, I I'm not hitting that right I'm trying to you're trying to be friendly no I'm trying <laughs> We need a resolution. We need, a, I think, a motion of support to try and work with the contractor to get the road open. Okay, but the one thing I will say is if they open it up on, let's say, the, the 15th, okay, they got 30 days to finish up what they've got. Can we do that? Uh, I, Brad, that is probably a legal question. Where yeah, then they've I, got well, 30 days. I tried days. to explain it before, but I was trying to say it slower or better. Um, you have several levers or leverage points to get make sure the work gets done one is the liquidated damage claim yeah if you tell authorize phil to say if the contractor allows it that's done it's not like it comes back again i mean they've met substantial completion so that penalty or leverage point is now over but you still have the leverage point of we're we still owe them 700 grand most people want to get their money and not wait until spring and so you still have that leverage that's a big one you know, that, that's what I was trying to explain earlier. So you, right now you have two hooks or levers or whatever you want to call them. <laughs> You're releasing one of them with a substantial completion, but you still have the other one. And that's his profit. His profit sits in there. Typically, well, more than profit. That's where you make your money. <laughs> yeah. But I'm saying. Yes. It, yeah. He's that's underwater it until he gets to seven grand, I would hope, yeah. or he bid it really well. Yeah. Okay. 30% of the job. Well, I, I, do we have a motion? Did anybody do that? You were trying I'll to make a motion to support it and to authorize the Phil. engineer negotiate with the contractor to open the road up with temporary with, with temporary striping. Well, I think well, Phil's he saying knows the temporary there, striping. It's a, it's a bit. He, you're, you're authorizing Phil to work it out in his discretion, knowing that we're going to lose one of those two levers. The, sub, the substantial completion means the liquidated damages stops. Right. The exact details you're having to delegate to Phil because he's having that conversation with the engineer, not the engineer, the contractor tomorrow after you're done voting. Yeah. It might not be successful. Right, you've you already said that. We're at yeah. where it opens on the 22nd. At least it gives them a shot to get the deal done and help yeah. the city. I, I think it's worth a try. Well, I guess that'd be the question is if you don't think it's important to try and get the road open and we can wait till the 22nd, then what I've just said. No, the mayor's motion be. clearly said he, that's the motion. It's important to get that road open. <laughs> yeah. I, I guess I'm not real trustworthy of the 22nd. With their, confident I'm basing what yeah. I heard earlier. Okay. Let's get it open. I'll second that. Okay. But I think Pat's. Any it. other questions? Comments? What if they don't buy it? We're just back at their mercy. Well, I, that's it. If if they, if we try and offer this extend to them that you know the liquidated damages would stop we'll call this substantial complete completed if you get a temp stripe and open and they they come back and say no uh, that's your only carrot I think right they, they, there, they, may, they may say the same thing they did that my owners will not allow us to take on the liability then but the temporary road, striping. Then if they get it paved on the 20 on the 14th pavement marking happens seven days later so can you document this some way in a letter or an email or something so when we're back in court in November? Oh, yeah. We're, yep. Okay, so we got a motion and a second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Thank you. Good luck. I'll be there. So that's all your updates, Patrick, on the park. You did them all. Yep, got everything done. You're not going to ask for any more money? <clears throat> well, I was hoping you are going to share some. Making sure. <laughs> all right, Chief Lee, what do you have? Good evening. First and foremost, I've been spending the last few days out in uh, the closed area of the construction zone. 
And again, I, I'm embarrassed. So, on notice right now, people going through that area while they are actively working, because they have to stop every single time someone comes through that area, you will get tagged if we're up there. Yeah, that's just bottom line. They're stopping work every time someone comes through that area. No more. They're out with the citation. I agree with you. So yeah. uh, we will work that as much as we can to make sure that this road gets done so we can go through and enjoy life again. Apparently it's been horrible. Um, so that's just first thing that comes to mind is that we're, we're going to be out there and, and uh, the contractors have really appreciated us being out there and being a presence. So we've had to chew a, a couple of rear ends, but we're making it. So first thing on my list is uh, squad car purchase where the, I got it as the 2022, it's the 2023 squad car. Um, price went up dramatically this year, about eight grand. That was for the base. Eight? Eight. About eight grand without just under eight grand. That was the base price without the option. So it's forty three thousand twenty one dollars eighty eight cents. Like I told you last week at the budget meeting, uh, the last day to order it was last week. I got that order in. Now I just need approval for that order. Well, you need what? A motion to approve your ordering it? Yeah. Uh -huh. After the fact? Yes. We told him to do that. Yes. I move that we order the vehicle at $43,021 and 88 cents. I second it. Hmm. On, a, on another note, the, the 2017 that it's replacing is six years old. Uh, if you so wish, it will go to TJ for Parks and Rec and let him have a vehicle instead of using his own while he's working, doing city stuff. That can come later, though. So you got a motion and a second, Eric. When you when you replace the equipment on the squad, do your best to use. We'll do the our best. You got. But they did change the body style since the last time. So I mean, we do know that we have a radio. We've got uh, a computer that's five years old or six years old right now. We've got, you know, just some stuff that we can't. So we'll do our best. Okay. Motion and a second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed. Motion carries. Okay, and last week, thank you, by the way. Uh, last week at the budget meeting, we discussed radar signs and potentially purchasing those. I did contact radar signs who provided us the radar signs in 2017. Um, for, for those signs, which I believe, Mayor, is what you uh, alluded to getting a cost for would be signs like uh, TJ's got on either side of the community center, which are solar signs, permanent signs. Um, they have refurbished ones right now, which would be just about 16,500, or 17,000 for four signs. That's about the same price that we bought them for five years ago. And so we would have to install them? We'd have to install them. And but they're refurbished. They're refurbished, yep. Warrant, one year warranty, everything's new it, yeah. new inside as far as uh, uh, radar and that type of thing. So, And the price is thirteen four forty. if the poles don't come with it? Right. And Patrick, do you have anything down there? What's that? Do you have any poles or anything yeah, down there yeah, that we can, work? We get all the breakaway stuff, so yeah, we can mount them. I mean, doesn't that make sense? It's, it's up to you. I don't have... we uh, got to install them anyway. Yeah, that's no problem to install. We just, you know, depending on where you choose, if we have to get permission from the county or whoever. Well, you don't have to get permission from the county. Well, no, you know, it's not going to be on the county road. It'll be on right. city, it's it's on city, city streets, streets, and they're good to go wherever you want them. Yeah. Well, I mean, if that's well, 3000 what, bucks. What's it's the, not a budgeted item, so. What's the real purpose for these signs, I guess, is what well, I'm asking. I don't know if four is the number, you know. I, I mean, we threw four, four was out. was a, a suggested number. I know they have eight remaining. I've right had now. a lot of people say that those sides are really effective. It slows people down. So, We discussed uh, West Shore Drive, uh, Manhattan, Anchor Point. 
Yeah. I mean, we've got roads that could use them anywhere, but uh, but it's up to the council what they decide, what they would, where they'd like to see them. I can suggest, and that's about it. Yeah. No. Well, I support that. I make a motion we approve. How many? I think four of them. You know, there's nothing on Manhattan Point or Anchor Point, and there's nothing on, on Wisher Wish Drive. So there's for sure three. And again, these would be permanent signs. These would not be mobile signs. Yeah. But these ones up at uh, the community center have lasted five years solar. Haven't had an issue with them. One got hit by a tree, I think, and it survived. So I don't know where you're going to get the money for it, but I'll make a motion we approve an order. Marcia, do you know where I could get the money? Well, I'm sure I could find a spot for it. <laughs> so does anybody support that motion? I'll second it. How much are they going to go up? You're saying these are refurbished. Are they looking at uh, the they're cost going up? Probably on? about fifteen to $2,000 more a piece. Really? Mm -hmm. hmm. How much maintenance do you do a year on those permanent None. ones? None. None. We've got the two mobile signs that we put. We've got uh, right now on County Road 3 and coming in by uh, Whipple. Yeah. And then I don't remember. But, oh, the other one is on West Shore right now. And you, and you never calibrate end. them or anything? Nope. I'm not citing anyone using them. And no, no. When I drive by and I'm going 30, it says 30. Good. <laughs> okay. I guess I'd ask Mike where you'd take it out of. We take it out of your existing fund balance. Fund balance? Yep. Yeah, I so I think down. my motion would be the 13442. I think, Pat, you could find something and okay. put them up. So there's a motion and a second. Anything else? All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Thank you. Yep. Yeah. That's it? That's it. I got one more thing here. Is that yours, Mike, or what is this? Perkins Road. I, I can. You doing that? I can summarize that. It's okay. just it's nothing new. We're just cleaning up. We already did deeds to everybody a year or two ago. Chard just couldn't find a resolution that you know confirmed that. But the deeds have been recorded long ago. So. So we've had the public hearing. We had the public hearing. It just we can't find a resolution that a title company wants to see a resolution. Someone's trying to sell or refi one of the lots there. So that was requested by a title company. Okay. All good. So, it was, no, it's, so all harmless. the yeah. all the parameters have been met. The yeah. public hearing, the published notice. We did all, all those things long ago. It just didn't have this. We had a resolution to vacate the street, the old street. The resolution did not include. After it's vacated, we're going to deed out the, that middle area like we did, you know. Um, but the deeds have been recorded long ago. Okay. So I move that we approve the resolution vacating the property as provided I'll by Brad Person tonight. I'll second it. Okay, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Do you have anything else, Brad? We got out of sync here on the thing, but. That's it. Okay, we're going to go to public forum. Action may or may not be taken. God, do I have to read this every time? <laughs> may or may not be taken on any issue raised. If council requires more information or time for consideration, the issue will be placed on the agenda of the next regular council meeting. Speaker must state their name and address. Anybody have anything? No, nope, not seeing anybody. We'll close public forum. Was it? What time was it? Uh, I think that's it, isn't it? I'm not sure. Any old business? Any new business? You guys have anything? Nope. Okay. Motion to adjourn. Move. Aye. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. <laughs> Are you talking about the meet that Thank closed you. meeting?